You're watching this video because you want your website or your client's websites to show up in ChatGPT. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to rank in ChatGPT so you can get found in 2025 and beyond. And I'm recording this video after going down a really big rabbit hole. As you can see here, I've documented exactly how AI search engines work, what influences AI search engines recommendations like ChatGPT, and I've also created my own AI search engine checklist so you can rank in ChatGPT. I'll link this in the second link in the description because the first link in the description is actually going to be a waiting list for a tool I'm creating that helps brands score, monitor, and boost their visibility in AI search engines like ChatGPT. So if you're interested in that, check it out in the description, but I'm going to get straight into it because I believe AI search engines like ChatGPT, like SearchGPT are the future. And in fact, at the end of 2024, ChatGPT usage actually exceeded Bing. And I do not see that slowing down because if you've used ChatGPT or SearchGPT, it is just a better experience than Google search engines. And I think it's a no brainer that this is going to continue. I believe it's going to be less competitive than Google SEO because there's going to be less people in it. So if you want to make the most out of this opportunity, make sure you watch this video and access a checklist. Now, in terms of how ChatGPT actually works, when someone goes to them, they ultimately enter a search query. And this is where the real key difference between ChatGPT and Google comes in. Because the average prompt length in ChatGPT is actually 23 words. In Google, the average keyword length is 4.2 words. So there's around a 5x increase in the length of query that someone searches into ChatGPT. So it's very, very different. And in fact, 70% of what people type into ChatGPT has a completely unique search intent when compared to Google. So it's a completely different market that you're playing in. People type in different things, they expect different results, and you need to be aware of that. Now, once a user actually types something into ChatGPT, the first thing that these AI search engines do is process the query. It will break the query down into individual words, remove any filler words, it'll enhance the query and then structure it in a way that's easy to understand. And if you ever want to see this in action, if you actually head over to Gemini's Deep Research and type something in, it'll actually break down the prompt into a key steps that it's going to go through in order to find you the best answer, which is not only a great way for understanding how to rank in these AI search engines, but it's also a great way to understand how they actually break the queries down. Once it's done this and it's understood the query, it's then going to gather information to give you an answer to that query. And this information gathering process is called information retrieval. Something in AI search engines you may often hear is actually RAG, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, which is essentially how AI search engines generate accurate and up-to-date responses. What ChatGPT does, it will retrieve information from its database, from its index to provide you with the information. So it will find what it believes matches up with your query. Then it will begin ranking those results to give you the best output. Now, just quickly going through the index, essentially what ChatGPT does in sort of a generalized way, it does three things. First of all, it's already got an understanding. It's already crawled the internet to build up its understanding of different information. So sometimes when you type something in ChatGPT, it doesn't have to search the web. It just already has information that it knows and it will just provide information based upon that. So some part of its index is information it already knows. ChatGPT also has the ability though to crawl the internet. So when you type in a query, it may crawl the internet in order to get information, but it may also go through and get different external data through partnerships that it may or may not have. One thing to bear in mind is Microsoft owns, I believe around 49% of ChatGPT. So ChatGPT relies heavily on Bing. So if you want to influence ChatGPT's search results, you may want to make sure you're ranking high on Bing. So to build the index, it crawls the web, it goes through its pre-existing information, as well as going through other data providers to ultimately make sure that when the query is processed and information gets retrieved, it has a ton of different info in order to provide the best answer. Now, when that information then gets pulled through the informational retrieval process, it then begins to get ranked and filtered. So ChatGPT will score the results and then it will personalize and filter those results based upon what it already knows about you, which is where I believe ads are going to come into play in the future. 
It will then generate an answer, which is the G in RAG. So it will use AI models to essentially provide a text-based answer. It will also verify the accuracy at this stage. Now, despite this, hallucinations still does occur. So the results aren't 100% correct right now. However, they are getting better. But as you can see, there's a lot that goes into just being able to generate the answer in the first place before then delivering the result. So it shows the results and formats the output, which is sometimes why you may see some images, some videos. It will essentially format the output in the best way in order to provide the information that you're looking for based upon the information that it has available in its index. And then from there, it will train based upon what you do. So if you click on a search result, if you give a follow-up question, this all goes into training the AI search engine, training ChatGPT to be better over time. So that is an overview of how AI search engines work, how ChatGPT works. And now what I'm going to walk through is what actually influences the recommendations both on a general basis and then on a local basis. Now going into general, when I say general, that's when it's not a local search term. So if you search something like best running shoes for a marathon, that is a general search term. It's not local. And these are the things that influences that shows. And these are the things that influence what shows based upon my experience of analyzing hundreds of search results from building my new tool and also analyzing papers from people that have also deep dived into this. Now, the most important thing when it comes to ranking in ChatGPT is list mentions. You want to make sure that you're getting list mentions on authoritative lists in your niche. You then, of course, need to make sure you have a strong website authority that ranks well on Bing search results. So you need to make sure you're still focusing on your website. Just because I believe ChatGPT is growing does not mean SEO is dead. SEO is still so, so important. Google isn't going anywhere, and you also need to make sure you're ranking well on Bing. Brand search and mentions are also really important. Mentions are very, very important, in particular with ChatGPT, because as I've mentioned, in ChatGPT's index, there'll be all this information that ChatGPT is already trained upon. And you need to make sure that your brand is getting mentioned in that info so that ChatGPT is actually training itself on your brand, and it knows what you are. Eating affiliations is also super important. If you want to rank for running shoes, you want to make sure you've got lots of helpful information about running shoes on your website, as well as also some really strong affiliations, i.e. you're getting mentioned on really authoritative websites. For example, here in this ChatGPT result, you can see not only is there a ton of different listicles, but also on top of that, you'll see that Wikipedia is at the top. So getting featured on places like Wikipedia is fantastic because these are the authoritative places that ChatGPT is going to get its info. Then there's online reviews. You want to make sure that you're getting really solid online reviews on places like Trustpilot, Captera, and G2. Because as you'll see, if you ever head over to Gemini and you see the breakdown of what it actually looks for when it goes through search results, it'll actually often look for reviews on different websites, on reputable places, and even actually UGC content, which is something I'm going to touch upon in a second. Another thing you want to make sure you're doing is sharing unique statistics and data, digital PR, showing that you're an expert, including unique stats on your website is so, so important because it not only trains these search engines that you're reputable, but also remember ChatGPT and AI search engines do not know everything. So if you can include unique data on your website, this is going to be a gold mine to these AI search engines because they will ultimately want to show the best, most up-to-date and helpful information for anyone that's using its service. And then finally, for general recommendations, you want to try and share personal experiences and or encourage UGC. Because remember, ChatGPT itself has no personal experience. It's never ran a marathon itself, which is why sometimes when you want to learn something, you'll often see it pulls through personal experiences from different websites because it really values these because it's never actually done these things before so it does have to rely on real world experience that you'll see in certain blogs and certain websites like this now moving on to local recommendations this is a little bit simpler but a lot of the themes are the same local business reviews as it is with you know local seo on google is the most important thing so you want to make sure you're getting local reviews for your business on your google my business profile as well as also getting online reviews on places like trustpilot captera g2 etc because these ai search engines will go through 
and they will look for reputable businesses that rank well in local search results. Then just like general recommendations, list mentions are so, so important. If you're an SEO agency in London, for example, you want to make sure you get featured on these listicles of the best SEO agencies in London because these are some of the key resources that ChatGPT and AI search engines are going to pull through. And then finally, just as it was with general recommendations, you want to make sure your website authority, the domain authority, the topical authority, the rankings for the same keywords that you want to show up for in ChatGPT is high on normal search engines, because this is also really important. So as I mentioned, you can't leave normal SEO aside. Normal SEO is ChatGPT SEO, so you cannot avoid it. And just to give you an example here, again, I searched best SEO agency London, and the businesses that showed up first also had websites that ranked really well on Bing that were cited in ChatGPT search results. So that is a really quick run through of what influences recommendations on both a general basis and then a local basis. I'm now going to go through how to rank in ChatGPT checklist. It also works for Gemini, Perplexity, and any other AI search engine. So make sure you head to the link in the description if you just want to get access to this full guide. So getting straight into it, the first thing that I want you to do is build a list of the top lists in your niche and outreach get listed in the top three. As I've already mentioned, these listicles are very heavily relied on, particularly when it comes to ChatGPT's ranking. So you want to make sure you get listed in as many of these as possible. And ideally, from my experience, the top three. Then moving on to the second thing, this will be pretty obvious. But again, a lot of this stuff, as I've already mentioned, is the same as normal SEO but there are some distinct differences. But in step two, I want you to make sure you're building reviews on relevant platforms. So for example, if you're a local business, I want you to make sure you're getting reviews on your Google business profile. If you're a software business, make sure you're getting reviews on G2 and Captera. And then if you're any business, you should also make sure you're focusing on Trustpilot as well, because these are sources that you will see ChatGPT pull from. Now moving on to the third thing that I want you to do, I want you to do a audit of your brand on ChatGPT. I want you to head to ChatGPT and just ask it what it knows about your brand, because that's going to tell you about whether AI search engines like ChatGPT know what your brand is anyway. And it's also then going to show you what it knows and where it's getting that information from. And when you know what AI search engines like ChatGPT already know about you, if they know about you at all, that then gives you a starting point to then be able to influence those results. So if you see that information about your brand is being pulled from certain places, that then gives you a starting point because you know ChatGPT is using those places. So you should then influence what those places say about your brand in order to then begin getting ChatGPT to show you for the things that you want to be shown for. Certain places that you may end up going after you do this is Reddit, industry websites, and even Wikipedia if your brand is in that position. Now moving on to the fourth thing, I want you to add schema markup to key web pages on your website. Schema such as FAQ schema, local business schema, review schema, that sort of stuff. And especially with FAQ schema, if you can add unique fact-filled information, because as I said, ChatGPT loves unique information, particularly statistics. If you can add this information high up on the web page, ensure it has a really good clear structure, you're using schema markup, this is going to boost the likelihood that your brand features in AI search engines like ChatGPT. Now moving on to the fifth thing that you can do, I want you to match search intent all across your website, not just on the web pages you want to rank. Now I know this isn't ChatGPT, but it's a really helpful fact that I just want to draw to. This is actually from Surfer. They found that only 52% of the sources cited in AI overviews do not rank in the top 10, i.e. page one of Google. And this means even though particularly with ChatGPT, it, just because you're ranking on the top 10 on Google or in Bing does not mean that you're going to be showing up in AI search results. You need to make sure that you're doing SEO, you're doing generative engine optimization across all of your website because it's no longer enough just to be focusing on key pages. You need to make sure that you are reputable, you have experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness across the whole of your website. Because if you don't, those pages that aren't on page one may not have a chance of getting featured at all in ChatGPT or even in AI overviews. So ranking in ChatGPT does require a holistic approach. 
So do not sleep on these tactics. Now moving on to the sixth thing that you should be doing, and that is making sure that your content is accessible with clean HTML and Markdown and there's a really good structure because actually only Gemini and Applebot render JavaScript. So if you want to rank in ChatGPT, if you want to rank in search GPT results, you need to make sure that you haven't got a lot of JavaScript on your website because ChatGPT's crawlers that actually go to your website will not render that JavaScript. So if there's important information that needs to be loaded in, it won't get loaded in by ChatGPT, which means it's not going to be featured in the search results. So you need to make sure that you've got your content accessible with clean HTML that doesn't require JavaScript to load in. Now moving on to the seventh thing that you can do, as I've already mentioned, you need to make sure that you continue ranking well on Google and Bing search results pages, especially with ChatGPT, because Microsoft owns 49% of OpenAI. ChatGPT does use Bing search results, so you need to make sure you're ranking well if you do want to be featured. And then moving on to the last thing that you need to be doing in order to make sure you're consistently showing up in ChatGPT and SearchGPT search results, that is tracking your AI visibility. Because if you're not tracking it, if you're not collecting data, you're gonna have no idea on how you're doing compared to competitors, what they're doing that you're not, and how to ultimately beat them. So whatever tool you use, you do need to make sure you're tracking visibility in AI search results. Now, if you do want to join the waiting list for the tool that I'm building, head over to tryknown.ai. You can sign up to the waiting list. However, there are other tools out there available because just like in SEO where you track your keywords, you track your website's visibility, you need to be doing the same in AI search results because it's moving so, so fast and you want to make sure you're not left behind. So there you are, guys. That is a guide to how to rank in ChatGPT. As you already mentioned, I'll add a link in the description so you can access this whole resource and this whole breakdown of exactly what I'm doing to rank in ChatGPT. I'll also link another video where it's a full AI search engine optimization guide if you want to go into further detail there. And of course, if you found this helpful, please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like and comment on this video, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.